I lied on my last scouting report video. I'm not going to be doing it in order from defence to midfield to striker. Because West Ham also really needs to add midfielders slash wingers, I thought I'd do that first before I do left back. So we're taking a slight detour for the second part of the scouting report January 2022 edition. So I have five midfielder targets that I've written notes on. I've watched videos of them, made some accurate observations about them, and I've seen positive reviews about them from said fan bases for each five respective player. So for that reason, I'm going to be telling you about five midfielders I'd sign for West Ham and why they might be good fits. So let's roll the intro and get on with it. Midfielders are something that West Ham do need to look at for long-term future. Not at least because Mark Noble, the long-serving club captain of West Ham and my all-time favourite West Ham player, is retiring over the summer. There's obviously going to be rumours about Declan Rice leaving and that may ultimately happen. Although I hope that West Ham do keep him, there's always going to be that large possibility that he does leave. And this is where pre-planning for expecting what could be the unexpected is like necessary if you understand what I'm saying I think we need someone who can play on the right wing as well because Bowen seems to play there and he's the only real strong player who can play on the right wing if you've watched previous videos on my channel you know my opinions of why we need a right winger I won't go off on a tangent about that but it is a position that needs to be rectified um, I think we need to get midfielders who are more inclusive players. Players who can play across multiple roles. And that's what I took into account when I was doing this scout and report. Um, I've made some very brief notes on the players that I do want to talk about. But I have made my decision on two targets that I would take. This was easier than the centre-backs. I have to say. And... Um, well, the reason being is because I'm more of an attacking-minded, focused kind of guy when it comes to looking at statistics and players rather than I am a non-attacking-minded kind of person. I don't really look at defensive structure too much. I like to think of players who I think can add to West Ham's attack and give it that extra kick. So, I've got five players down here. I'm going to start off by talking about the first player. And just as luck would have it, he wants to leave his current club and look for a challenge elsewhere. So that means West Ham need to come knocking on the door. Up first on the scouting report for midfielders is Japan winger Hiroke Abe. A lot of Japanese players have been quite successful in the Premier League. Shinji Kagawa was one name that comes to mind. Um, also Maya Yoshida and Shinji Okazaki also had quite good careers in the Premier League and also in the UK as well. Celtic had Shunsuke Nakamura, the free kick merchant, who apparently is still bending them in well into his 40s. And also Celtic signed a few Japanese players as well. One such player is striker Kyogo Furuhashi, who plays with Abe in the Japan national team. So there are a lot of Japanese players coming over to the UK to try and make a name for themselves, and Abe should really consider doing this. He admits that he doesn't really have a future at Barcelona, and he's 22 years old. Um, he used to play for the Kashima Antlers, who Brazil legend Zico used to play for. He's now a technical director at the club. He gets no game time at Barcelona, and even though a lot of people said that he was going to be a breakthrough player, it never turned out that way. If I were to compare him to a current Premier League player, I would have to say Sun Hun Min. And it's not just because both of them are Asian. That's absolutely not the reason. It's because of their versatility. Harbe can play on both wings, but he can also play as a centre forward and a striker. So that's why it reminds me of Sun, because Sun can play anywhere on that forward line as can Arbe. He was highly rated in his youth. He's energetic, pacey, um, a very direct type of player, and he loves to attack. The fact that he hasn't got through at Barca... It's a bit sad for him, but it could also open another opportunity for him to move to another club. 
And with West Ham needing that kind of attacking option that we have with players like Ben Rama and Bowen, RB would slot in quite nicely and complement those guys. I next want to talk about an attacking midfielder who plays for Borussia Mönchengladbach. His name, Florian Neuhaus, a 24-year-old German who has some qualities that Declan Rice possesses. I watched some highlight clips of Neuhaus. Although people say that highlight clips can be deceiving because it only shows the best of one player, I was impressed with Neuhaus. I was really impressed with this guy. Why do I see Declan Rice in him? Well, let me tell you. It's because he has that ability to win balls back a lot, vision, and ability to consider what's going to happen with an oppositional play before it does happen, and then makes a move to counter-attack in his team's favour. Neuhaus is an impressive passer of the ball as well, like Declan Rice, and he's got an excellent passing range on him. He's... One of these players that dribbles long distances, like Declan Rice, and um, shoots outside the box, like Declan Rice has done as well. Except he likes to shoot quite high into top corners a lot, Neuhaus. He's the kind of player who will get laterally to the opposition player, try and fight him off, and then when he picks his spot, he will tempt to curl it. Neuhaus is also decent from set pieces as a free kick taker, and also... He can act as a holding midfielder if need be. Primarily he's an attacking midfielder, but he has a lot of those defensive qualities in him as well. That said, I couldn't really say he's like a Thomas Suchek because Neuhaus scores and assists a lot more than Suchek does. But he's still a very, very good midfielder. For player number three, we're staying in the Bundesliga. This time we're going to Stuttgart to talk about 19-year-old defensive midfielder Naoriu Ahamada. He was a former prodigy at the Juventus Academy, but it didn't really work out for him there, and instead he signed for Stuttgart in the Bundesliga. It definitely helped his career. Not only was he able to start more games, but he also managed to showcase himself. And boy, he has a lot of talent. He is a defensive midfielder by trade, and he's known for his athleticism and his tireless work ethic. This guy covers a hell of a lot of distance. A hell of a lot of distance on a football field. There is no nook and cranny that he won't go into. He just loves to run around the field. Not just run around willy-nilly, but run around with a very clear mindset on how he wants to impose himself on the game. For a 19-year-old to be that mature is very, very rare. But he has the maturity and the competence at such a young age to go far. And he's already tipped to be one of the best defensive midfielders in Europe in years to come. So Ahamada goes in here because I'm really impressed by his athleticism. I'm really impressed by his work ethic. And he doesn't ever run himself to the ground. He's the type of player you'd want in your team because of his energy as well. Let's leave Germany and head to Portugal to the capital, Lisbon. Sporting Lisbon. Up next on the list is 23-year-old winger Pedro Gonzalez. A player who is also known as Pote, as his nickname. He had to fill a void that Bruno Fernandes left, but he's done so really, really well. Has some similar qualities to Fernandes. Shooting, um, playmaking, scoring, and a decent eye for goal, especially from outside the area. Pote is also very technically gifted, and I think he would be a class signing for us. It would be a statement signing. You know how Jonathan David's been linked? This bloke as well. This Portuguese guy, Pote would also be a statement signing, in my opinion. One deterrent is the fact that Liverpool wanted to sign him over the summer and Lisbon wanted to sell him for around €80 million. Euros. So there's a price thing here, but somewhere worth throwing in because I think he's a very talented player. The last player on the list is a highly rated young attacking midfielder slash winger who plays for the Israel national team and plays league football for Shakhtar Donetsk in the Ukraine. His name is Manor Solomon. Arsenal's linked with him, and a few other clubs in Europe are as well. He is a flamboyant player. Skillful, dribbling, has trickery, but his main skill is his dribbling. He takes on players, often en masse, and gets past them with flicks, side passes, using pace, does it all to get past players. So, 
we need a tricky kind of player in the team. Solomon is someone that I did consider in this whole scout and report video. And I put his name in there because I do like him. I know other people are going to say we don't really need an attacking midfielder. But we need a little bit more depth in that position. I know Ben Rama's gone off to in January and he's going to come back. Solomon could even play on the wing. He's someone who can play on the wing. Players who can play out there. And I don't see why this guy can't. I think he's got the pace to play in the Premier League and the skills to grow as a player. And being 22 years old also is helpful because he's got many years left in him. Now that I have named those five players, I am going to tell you the two that I would select as signings for West Ham if I were the manager. My two choices are Hiroki Abe and Florian Neuhaus. Abe was a bit of a no-brainer because of how dynamic and how adaptable he is to playing in different positions. Like Ben Rama has played as attacking mid, winger, and as like a holding striker, as Bowen has played as a striker and a winger, um, the same as Fornals has played central midfield, attacking midfield and winger, Moyes likes to mix and match with the midfield positions. And with Hiroki Abe, you're going to get that. You're going to get a player who adds an answer to several different problems. He's a solution to absences. He's a, a solution to depth. He's a solution to having an attack. Florian Neuhaus goes in here because of his passing and his passing range. Someone that would really work well with Lanzini. Someone who would also work well with the wingers. And he's someone that Declan Rice actually might like to play off of. So Neuhaus goes in this because I think Bundesliga and the Premier League do have similar attacking qualities. And he wouldn't need to really settle that quickly. And... Yeah, I think Neuhaus would be a definitely good signing. The other three don't make the cut, partly because of price, because of competition as well. And I just don't think that I'm certain about what they could bring to the team in the long run. Arbe and Neuhaus would get straight in there and I would expect them to make an impact. So Hiroki Arbe and Florian Neuhaus are my two choices for midfield targets. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Scouting Report. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Go try and do a few transfer videos over the next few days. But with my work schedule and the fact I'm very busy in general, I'll see if I can get around to it in the end. If I don't, I am sorry. But thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Take care, everybody, and I will see you all soon.